Okay YouTube, hello once again and today we are going to be building a Govometer which is basically a meter used in voltmeters, amp meters, etc. We're going to get two permanent magnets and place them across from an electromagnet balancing on a pivot point which can move the meter back and forth. This will have to be springed back into one location. For that I will probably use rubber bands or maybe not this exact one but a weaker one. And it will be made on a piece of wood which is this piece of wood and we're going to mark it out and we're going to cut out these points such as a pivot point and all these other things from a piece of steel. This is just sheet steel. It's pretty thick. For the electromagnet we need something to wind around and the thicker core material you have then the stronger the magnet which is what we want so we're going to use a couple pieces of this steel which is thicker than the sheet metal and it will form an electromagnet similar to this which is two inches long and it's wrapped with magnet wire we're not going to use this it's going to be twice as thick as well as using thinner gauge wire so we can get more windings on it which will increase the strength of the magnet farther though with this thicker cable you do have the advantage of passing more amperage through it without it getting as hot as this cable and more amperage makes the electromagnet stronger and the cooler the electromagnet is the more efficient it will run but I think what we're doing right now should be enough I have everything marked out along these lines so what we have here is we have 5 inches measuring across from this point to the last mark but from here to here we have 4 inches and this is because there's going to be bolts underneath here securing everything in place and we have to stack it up a little bit on more pieces of wood. The piece of wood is a one and a half inches across and I split that up into three sections. So the foot of the of the mounting point would go here, the other one would go here, and the electromagnet will be stacked in between here. For an equivalent distance between point to point, it'll be like that. So now we can start building it and marking it out. Okay, so here's our piece of sheet metal and let's make some of our mounting points. First we're going to do the pivot points. So let's mark those out and cut it out. Okay, so to explain this farther, we are going to drill out a hole here, here, and a hole here. And we're going to bend it at this mark right here, so it will look like this one. And this is the other bracket, which I have made in the same way, and hopefully they will match up together. So let's cut this out, drill the holes, and file it down. Alright, so we have one of these drill it out now. You're going to see the holes line up okay. So it is here and at this point down here. Now that it's cut out you can see that it has some sharp edges. So we can file them down but I think an easier way to do it is to just cut it off. So this one is bent and this one is flat. To bend it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in some pliers and then force it against the ground. You can 
can see, that gives us a nice right angle without any special equipment. Okay, so with our piece of wood back here, you can see that we're going to mount it like this. But one important thing is that these holes should align, which they do if I held them flat against each other. But when we want it to mount here, the holes should line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bolt here with some nuts to space it out so it's straight. Two brackets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this bracket up and mark out its holes. We're going to drill this out now and what we're going to do is we're going to put these boxes under this so the drill is somewhere to go. Okay, so now let's mount this bracket into place with some bolts. We will put washers on these bolts when we fully tighten them later. Magnet, we have to drill out two holes which we are going to mount the two two inch cores of the electromagnet to and then once they are together we will wrap them in magnet wire. basically finished with this device. As you can see here, I got my two pieces of metal together. You can look at them there. You can see that they are in fact two pieces of metal stacked on top of each other with windings of wire wrapping across from there to there. This is that magnet wire which I was talking about. It's going around in two sets of loops. So there's about 40 windings in total. It's only wind at one layer though. And for these sides, these pieces of steel are made in the exact same way as these pieces. Also I lifted this up on a few bolts just to give me a bit more flexibility as far as this goes. And I'm using some ceramic disc magnets. These are very common magnets, though you might want to use larger ones. How you want to orientate the magnets is you want to have them so they attract each other. So north and south, like that. And how I found out was that if they were parallel to each other, or like this, then it would go that way. But it works better when I have it like this because they're offset. I think this is because of how the iron core was made, it's not exactly level and the magnetism doesn't go evenly. But here you can see that it just evens out every time I do that. Let's power it up and try to see if it measures our amperage. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have 3.3 volts of electricity and we're just going to connect this amp meter directly to the power. This should show a lot of movement. Okay, so this is the most power that we're going to use. Now let's try it with a resistor. I don't know how much resistance this one is. And yep. Next, let's try it 
using a load such as a motor to measure how much power the motor uses. This is that robot motor which I had for the linear actuator. What we're going to do is we're going to hook it up in series to measure the amperage. And we need one more clip which goes from here to the other lead. As you can see, this uses less amperage to power a load than it does to connect it directly, which is basically a short circuit even though there is resistance in the coil of the wire. The motor has more coils and that adds more resistance, so that means less current draw, which is shown on our pointing device. One thing to note about the needle of your galvometer is the longer it is the more precise you can measure but this does act as a lever and eventually it just becomes so long you can't move it but it does work to improve this I think that other galvometers, what they would do is they would have the coil separately moving independently from from the magnetic core, which is just a piece of iron here. How I set it up was that the iron moves with the coil, but I heard that you don't have to do that, that the coil can move separately or not have any iron at all, and that might give you more precise movements even without the longer needle. So this is my example of how to make this. I, I'm going to try to improve it in the future and integrate it with other devices as it becomes available.